welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Uh, we are back in our island survival series and um, in the last episode we created a highlight material for our boxes so that when we are close to an item we can pick up it highlights and um, for today's episode we are now going to get it so that we can actually pick them up. Uh, now because we are only going to be picking up crafting materials we don't need to do anything too crazy uh, in the in the sense of making uh, actual inventory items that will come down when we actually want to start crafting things um, so without further ado the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the highlight material put onto our boxes and this is actually very simple i found a lot of very complicated um kind of tutorials on this but actually to be honest it's very very simple all we need to do is get our static mesh uh reference by dragging it out from our components part and from this we're going to set custom uh, render depth set custom render depth there and so when we are in the circle we're going to apply the set render custom depth and when we're outside of it we are going to turn it off so just click the value to true click it off for this and also don't forget to plug in the static mesh at the bottom there uh, the other thing I have already done is on here uh, I also want our items to uh, apply physics to them uh, a bit like Skyrim you know how you kind of can move around items and, and when you drop them it, it drops them realistically well all we need to do for that is set stat, uh, stimulate uh, physics to true and what we'll see here is if I lift this box up now a little bit when we press play it drops there you go and it hits the ground and we can push it around and things like that and while we're in it as you can see we've got our box and it also um, has it so that um, it highlights both of them still and we can push items around so it gives it a bit, bit more of a realistic feel I quite like that that kind of addition to Unreal that it's very simple and easy to get items running around and push, pushing around your environment so uh, yeah very simple things so the highlight material now should be applied and also we have some lovely little physics applied to our objects um, the next thing I want to do is have it so that we can now pick up some objects now I need to keep a log of all of the uh, crafting materials we have on us so um, what I'm gonna do uh, I'm not gonna bother with any maximums at this point because I I'm not really too fussed about how many logs we carry or how many stones we carry now obviously if you're going for realism you'll need a maximum and you'll have to have a um, a uh, piece of logic that tells this the system that once we have too many we don't actually pick it up so we're going to create a couple of integers now this is all we need really to get our crafting things in in place is we just need some uh some integers to tell us how much wood and how much stone we have and um we will try and get that visualized today as well and we don't need to do anything else with that at this point now again if you wanted a maximum you could carry you would need a wood max and a stone max and of course uh, you would need to set the values of how much you want your players to be able to hold at any one point. Uh, if we go back into our content drawer where we have our base interactable, we are going to now duplicate this and we're going to call this wood pickup. And we're going to create a second one. We're going to create another child called stone pickup. Um, and you probably guessed it we're going to swap these out now these uh, static meshes out for the ones that we actually want so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set this one up to be wood there's our wood mesh now it's probably going to come through very big there it is yep oh my days it's so big uh, why I didn't scale this up in blender I'll never know can I please why can't I change the scale okay what we'll do is we'll move the sphere instead and we'll make that one slightly bigger and we'll just have to see how big it is in the world I guess um, also the camera's moving around very fast wow uh, okay so let's do that okay compile that and just for now we're just gonna drag one out just to see what, how big it actually is oh it's very tiny oh oh dear made you too tiny oh gosh where are you stick <laughs> let's um let's make it a bit bigger okay let's make it back to like 0 0.5 maybe and 
see what it looks like now. Okay, that's uh that's a little bit too big but it's not too bad okay and then so let's just change that down to about 0 0.3 then and i will be yeah a lot happier with that there we go so we've got we got a stick that's good let's open up our content draw and pick up the stone and then let's change you to stone there you are our very awful looking stone and it's probably a bit too big but we'll drag it out and see first okay yeah way too big uh that needs to be um to do, do probably about the same zero point i'm gonna say 0 0.4 for that one and the sphere i'm gonna make a lot bigger let's make it like an eight uh mm, let's make it like a 10 there we go and yeah there you go we've got stones and we've got sticks so now we need to be able to pick it up and put it into our uh in we need to basically int up the amount we have so we're going to put these in separately because they're going into separate um ints but um the code will essentially be the same in our base interactable what i'm going to do uh no I'm going to do it in here, I think. So on this sphere, on begin overlap, and on end overlap, I just want to make sure that these um, these do highlight. Because as a child BP, they should. It does, and it does. Amazing. They're obviously, oh god, uh, you didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> the, a that stone is far too big and that sticks now disappeared so there we go um <laughs> so uh now that we've done this what we want to do is we want to take our sphere um we want to i'm going to just copy this over just to speed me up a little bit um there we go and when we go to this one specifically we want to um we want to en enable an input. Enable um, input. And we also want to disable input. We're going to get our player controller. And we're going to plug that into the bottom of these. So the player controllers uh, it goes into both. And the button I want to press is E. That's going to be our interaction key. So E key. We'll just get the E key there. There we go. And on press, we want to do something. And so for the wood, what we want to do first off is we want to um, uh, we want to destroy. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to destroy the actor at the end. But what I want to do actually is promote this to a variable. Promote to variable. Plug it into the chain, like so, and I'm just going to change the name of this to third person character, TPC. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that third person character reference, and from the third person character reference, I am going to uh, set, no, I'm going to get first, get uh, our wood, get wood. And all I want to do is I also want to set this value, set wood. But once we press E, and what I want to do is I want to uh, in, I'm just going to add one. I think that's going to be easier. Um, add, add. Um, where is it? Uh, maybe if I do plus. Oh, there we go. It's there. And we just want to add one to it, and then we want to set that new wood value. Uh, so every time we pick up a wood, we're going to gain one wood. And then we are going to destroy the actor. And we can test this out, but we'll need uh, a way of seeing the, the amount of wood we've got. Uh, I'm also going to copy and paste this into our stone. 
event graph. We can delete, oh, we can delete these out like so. And I'm just going to do the same thing. Um, grab that event begin play, uh, event begin overlap, sorry, and event uh, end overlap two. And just plug those in. Uh, I'm not sure why this didn't carry over from the the parent, but it's fine. Uh, we need to also right click and create that variable within our stone as well. And then we're going to get the E key again, or the E K, E key, one of those. There we go. And uh, on the wood pickup, we're just going to basically do the same thing, but for the stone. So. Um, for example, grab the third person character, get our stone variable. Uh, we also want to set stone variable. And uh, we then just need to add one to our stone. So we get the current value. We add to it and we plug that into the stone. So just getting one. And then we just want to destroy actor like so now let's just make sure that this e key works by picking up although we won't be able to see it we'll be able to go e e so in theory we should now have one stone and one wood and the way we're going to see that oops i do that every time i record um is we're going to go to our it might be under blueprints there it is player hud and we're just going to add two little values down here that shows us how much st stone and wood we've got. So to get that, we're just going to get the text. Uh, now, this is obviously isn't going to be very fancy. Um, let's set this currently to 000 so we can see the spacing that we need. Um, and we'll do that. And I'm going to copy and paste that so we get a second one. And then what I'm going to do is get the text and just call this one wood like so uh, I might make that all capitals just so it looks a little bit more uniform wood and then we'll get a second one that's called stone like so and we're gonna anchor all these to the bottom oh I didn't mean to move it Jesus. And then we anchor all that to the bottom, like so. Then we're going to create a binding for the, the, the text, so wood. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the same for both, of course. So we're going to cast to third person character, like so. Don't forget to get the player character. And then all we need to do is pull out from here get I think I'm doing wood first so we'll get the wood and we just plug it straight into oh no we want to plug it into there uh, I don't know how to remove that oh there you go there um, get the wood we two text our integer and then we plug that into the return node and it is going to be exactly this so I'm going to copy and paste this straight into uh, we go back into the designer click on the stone one create another binding on the text and then we right click and drop this in here and hopefully now once I've swapped this over for stone so delete that one out get stone we should now in theory have a numerical value that shows us how much stone and how much wood we have and just to test this out uh, I'm gonna go back into my third person character go to the blueprints no I'm not I'm gonna go to the interactables and I'm just going to throw out a couple of stones. Now, I know the stones need resizing. That's fine. So does the wood probably a little bit. Uh, but for now, just for testing purposes, we can at least play and pick up a few of each. So we go up. It oh, it should highlight. There we go. Highlights again. And you can see that the amount of wood and stone I've got is now going up. And now that we have some wood and stone, we can start to work on creating a few different objects now that we can use to um, start crafting things and of course um, we can then start to um, uh, craft and then we can start chopping trees down 
uh, mining stone faster. We also need to tackle a ways to now um, give us something to drink and eat. So those are all things as well we will need to kind of tackle down the line. But for now, we've at least got wooden stone so that we can um, start crafting maybe like a, a stone axe or a stone pickaxe uh, and start gathering materials faster than picking stuff up off the ground. That's our next mission. Um, so yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. Hopefully you found it useful. Um, I, I'm hoping to continue some more of this episode over the next couple of weeks. Uh, so if you have enjoyed this, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Much love. Take care. Bye.